Patrick, how'd you characterize the round? Yeah, I thought it was good. Obviously, got off to a great start. Uh, our group had good momentum. Jordan and I were a bunch under uh, on the front nine, and um, you know, a, a day where I putted really, really well, made um, you know every putt I should have, and a, a couple longer ones. So it was a good start. Yeah, obviously not the bet, the start you probably wanted this year putting. Is there anything that maybe any change that might have led to the good day today? No, I, I, I mean, I think I'm really comfortable around this place. Greens are really good. Um, this is probably the best condition I've seen Riviera. And, uh, you know, it's a place I'm really comfortable. I only saw on TV the second shot on 16. I've never seen anyone off the tee short of the Neither 10th green. Neither have I. Um, you hit a tree, I assume? or I did. Uh, happy with, with, with the outcome or... What did you have left coming in, and was there any part of you that was concerned about a really good round kind of getting um, lost on one hole? You know, I got up and down for bogey. It was a good up and down. Um, obviously a spot I've never been. I've been on most places on this golf course. Um, but, you know, start off today, eight birdies and one bogey, uh, great start. Did you have to laser the shot or step it off or what? I, I didn't laser it. Don't, don't <laughs> have me step in something here. No, we don't even I I don't carry the laser on, on uh, game days. Did you have Joe walk it off? Uh, the no, no, I, I just chunked it in the bunker. Patrick, do you know in your life how many course records you have shot? I don't. I've got a couple. You do? Do you know how many you have or no? I don't. A, co- a, a couple. Uh, do you ever out here allow yourself to think about an idea like that? No, it's not really front of mind. Just uh, trying. Not to even s- back of mind. No, <laughs> no, I, I'm not thinking about course records. I don't even know what the course record is around this place. 61. 61, yeah, I, I didn't really scare it uh, today. Um, no, I mean, I'm just out there really trying to focus each and every shot. I know it's cliche, but that's the truth. Is this the the 72-hole record it, it here has stood longer than any other tournament, has active it? tournament on, on tour? Um, why do you think that is, and does that surprise you at all? Probably a testament to the design. Um, you know, and they've added length over the years, so I'm not sure what year. Uh, 85. 85. So I bet the golf course played shorter in 85 than it than it, it rained that week too. Is what we yeah, but than it than it did uh, than it does now. Uh, but I, you know, like I've like I'll tell anyone that asks, I think it's one of the best, if not the best, design we play all year. It's uh, one of my favorite golf courses. This and Royal Melbourne of all of, all the golf courses I've ever played. Uh, and kind of along those lines, we saw last week, and I've lost track of it myself, 57s, 59s, yeah. the Wyndham 60 the week before, etc. Should anyone be um, surprised by this? I guess if you look at the big picture of golf, and I mean, I guess scores have been coming down from the 50s to the 60s, etc. How, how low can it, can it go and should it go? Well, I don't know how much lower than 57. I know they played in Bogota on a very, very short golf course. Uh, I've played. Elevation. I've played there. Yeah, it's like eight thousand or six, seven thousand feet. Uh, actually, won a, a <laughs> Web. dot com event in Bogota. That was uh, your win. Yeah, uh, and on on the Web tour. Yeah, twenty thirteen or fourteen. Was it the same deal? The Pacos and the Lagos and all that? Or? I think it was a different course. Yeah, it, I don't think it was sixty three hundred yards. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, uh, the conditions are getting better. Guys are getting better, and and uh, guys are also playing more aggressively. So you almost have to these days. Um, and I think the, you know, most guys travel, or I shouldn't say travel, but most guys have a st- statistician look over their stuff. And in general, it skews more aggressive that the gains are worth it. So um, it's, not, it's not too surprising. Is it good or bad for the, for the game and it's, as an entertainment? I, I wouldn't even characterize it as good or bad. I think it just is. I mean, you know, the Tiger effect, you see it this week. Uh, you've seen it for the last 15, 15 years. Uh, young kids are growing up with better information, more drive, and they're, they've been emulating him for you know, over a decade now. And so I think that's led to a generation of golfers that, as a whole, are better. There's good money now, too. There is. Yeah, I wanted to ask, because when, when the, the rollback stuff first came out, you, you said you wanted to hear more about it, you wanted to ask people. So I guess it's sort of dovetailing off, Dove's, off Doug's question. Do, do you think that these low scores and that these scoring records are getting broken, does it – does it kind of change your mind a little bit, or do, do you start to see the other side? Not, not at all. I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think it would be good for the game. Um, you know, I think more people are excited about golf now more than ever. You know, hearing some of the numbers that there's been more rounds played in the last year than ever before in this country, uh, I think that's fantastic. And I know it's it's growing worldwide as well. So, you know, that should be the emphasis. Patrick, you said that you know using numbers 
can make you more aggressive. Can you give some examples, maybe even around here, of where your studies and other people's sure. studies have been well, made I think you more aggressive? The, the tenth hole is like the best case study. So, um, you know, in the past, people laid up. I think it was maybe 10 or 15 years ago the numbers were 50-50, and now I think the numbers are darn near 100%. And you can just tell by looking at the numbers that the guys that go for the green have a low, lower scoring average. So by making that decision, you know, you're saving a third of a shot or you're saving uh, two-tenths of a shot. And you add those up over the course of a week, uh, it's hard not to make that decision. That's a fairly common example. Can you think of another one that on this golf course that you, you get a green light now that you maybe wouldn't have before? Um. Good question. I know ten. I know ten for sure. I think it's even, um, you know, like a wedge shot into the third hole. You know, I left it behind the hole. I didn't actually make the putt, but you know, I was left it on the short side. And I think in the past, old school mode of thinking would be feed it in from the middle of the green. You, you know, when I'm getting to 130 yards, I'm trying to hit it about as close as I can. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. All right. Thank you. This way. All right. Thanks, Yeah, appreciate the time.